Some of you may have heard of the Great Reset. What's the Great Green? What is the Great Reset? Great Reset. Um. So that. Is it a version I, of the New World Order? Is that what they're changing the name to? I. I. I from. You know how I feel about political outlooks and differences in political outlooks. I don't think it's a weakness. I think it's a strength. And I think America needs to get back to being able to have a conversation with people who don't agree. We learn so much from each other when we do that. You, I think, are going to hear and learn and question and disagree or perhaps really agree. Um like very few podcasts will uh, push you to. You're going to learn an awful lot. I ask myself the question, uh, is it really impossible for the United States with all its technology, all of its military and police power, is it really impossible to impede the inflow or stop the inflow of drugs into the United States? Is there some political dividend or benefit in the fact that thousands upon thousands, if not millions, of ghetto youths who are potential political activists, who have everything to gain by radical change in this country, are taken out of the political scene when they go on crack, go on cocaine, go on heroin. Reagan is asking us to believe that he knew nothing of Noriega's drug connections it's until the indictment this past February. Of He's asking us therein to believe that the world is flat, in my estimation. They're all sacred. What we need to do is present comparative religion as a bunch of interesting historical anecdotes. And then, and, and, and show the silly reasons why they each did what they did. And, but absolutely, instead of shying away from it, we have to explicitly educate people uh, to, to confront their own misconceptions. Uh, uh, that might be a century away. I think in the interim, we, at least if we learned about each other, we would be less likely to want to kill each other. Well, you know, when you say... It's a generation, it's gone. One generation is all it takes. So, I can tell you that, you know, a generation ago, people have said there's no way that people would allow gay marriage, okay? And, and slavery, essentially a generation, got rid of it. And so all you have to do, it's, change is always one generation away. And we have the children, and it, it, exactly. So if we can plant the seeds of doubt in our children, religion will go away in a generation, or at least largely go away. And that's what I think we have an obligation to do. An illusion, it will be so large, so vast, it will escape their perception. Those who will see it will be thought of as insane. We will create separate fronts to prevent them from seeing the connection between us. We will behave, behave as if we are not connected to keep the illusion alive. Our goal will be to accomplish one drop at a time so as to never bring suspicion upon ourselves. This will also prevent them from seeing the changes as they occur. We will always stand above the relative field of, the, of their experience for we know the secrets of the absolute. We will work together always and will remain bound by blood and secrecy. Death will come to he who speaks. Why does anyone for a single moment believe anyone who uses language in a mangled form like that? I heard Marian Anderson do it. <laughs> I heard Jose Feliciano sing his Puerto Rican version and Jimi Hendrix and Whitney Houston. Yep. And the idea is if you want to get rid of the culture of this country, you're going to need laws and rules. You can kiss your freedom goodbye, right? It doesn't matter. The key point is the culture of the United States of America. And as I said recently to Sagar, you can kiss your freedom goodbye. And what I love about this country is, is that I, I'm absolutely free to burn a flag in protest. Tending to do the opposite. We will use our knowledge of science and technology in subtle ways so they will never see what is happening. We will use soft metals, aging accelerators, and sedatives in food and water, also in the air. They will be blanketed by poisons everywhere they turn. The soft metals will cause them to lose their minds. We will promise to find a cure from many of our fronts, yet we will feed them more poison. The poisons will be absorbed through their skin and mouths, and they will destroy their minds and reproductive systems. 
From all this, their children will be born dead, and we will conceal this information. The poisons will be hidden in everything that surrounds them, and what they drink, eat, breathe, and wear. We must be ingenious in dispensing the poisons, for they can see far. We will teach them that the poisons are good, with fun images and musical tones. Those they look up to will help. We will enlist them to push our poisons. They will see our products being used in films and will grow accustomed to them and will never know their true effect. Assume all of your worst nightmares are true. I have zero desire yep. to do it. You began around a system of truths that were excluded from the gated institutional narrative. That was your seed corn. Assume that you have an incredibly talented intelligence complex that indulge your wildest crazies. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump, Justice Roberts is part of a pedophile conspiracy. <laughs> right. Go, go full QAnon. Let me tell you something that I'm very, very clear on. Donald Trump, as a puppet of Vladimir Putin, and decided <laughs> that it had to win the election through uh, fraud. The Supreme Court pretends to be nine druids that can divine the truth by <laughs> taking on black robes and speaking in Latin. Justice Roberts is part of a pedophile conspiracy. Their minds will belong to us, and they will do as we say. If they refuse, we shall find ways to implement mind-altering technology into their lives. We will use fear as our weapon. We will establish their governments and establish opposites within. We will own both sides. We will always hide our objective, but carry out our plan. We will perform the, la uh, the labor. They will perform the labor for us, and we shall prosper from their toil. Our families will never mix with theirs. Our blood must be pure always, for it is the way. We will make them kill each other when it suits us. We will keep them separated from the oneness by dogma and religion. We will control all aspects of their lives and then tell them what to think and how. We will guide them kindly and gently, letting them think that they are guiding themselves. We will foment anonymously between them through our factions. When a light shall shine among them, we shall ex extinguish it with ri by ridicule or death, whatever suits us best. We will make them rip each other's hearts apart and kill, uh, kill their own children. We will accomplish this by using hate as our ally, anger as our friend. The hate will bind them totally and never shall they see that, that from their conflicts we will emerge as the rulers. They will be busy killing each other. They will bathe in their own blood and kill their neighbors for as long as we see fit. We will benefit greatly from this, for they will not see us, for they cannot see us. We will continue to prosper from their wars and their deaths. We shall repeat it over and over until our ultimate goal is accomplished. We will continue to make them live in fear and anger through images and sound. Why does anyone, for a single moment, believe anyone who uses language in a mangled form like that? <laughs> now here's a little test for you. Who is the first who will tell me what is visibly scientifically wrong? But it's no less ridiculous than, than nothing exploding and becoming something. You know, if you look at it objectively, they, you know, they try to make you believe that, uh, that the idea that a, um, a supreme being, a creator, created it. It was fake. It was fake. It was absolutely fake. There's not too many people involved in this. I mean, but it's no less ridiculous than, than nothing exploding and becoming something. If you were to go to NASA and download one of their photos of the Earth in the moon sky and put it in Photoshop, okay, um, drop the saturation and the, the levels down, you'll see that uh, the Earth is, has been pasted in because you'll see a rectangular box around the the Earth. It's, it's all fraud, it's all fake. Um, pretty much everything NASA puts out is, is fraudulent. There are, there, are no, there are no images of Earth um, from space. Uh, the only one that NASA actually claims is a photograph is from 1972 and it's the, the famous picture. It's got, um, it's got Africa sort of near the top and it's the, the same picture they've been using for, for the last 40 or 50 years um, in every textbook. Um, every other image is, a, is what they call a composite. It's Photoshop. I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. I, I didn't know. On the other hand, mm -hmm. it's not true. They're... 
You see, Adolf Hitler was not the first, nor was George Bush, to fantasize about this hideous idea of totalitarian government enslaving an entire globe through mind manipulation. What Adolf Hitler began in his adamant research on, he had the largest number of human subjects from which to work. World War II research, there was still a big interest in behavior modification, interrogation, truth drugs, Manchurian candidates, unwitting spies, chemical weapons, and biological weapons. Especially the behavioral modification, and tr interrogations, and truth drugs, there was a big brain trust by the Germans. The CIA and US military um, established a lot of research projects that were cl highly classified at the time. Here's a list of them. Most people have heard of MKUltra, uh, but there was a whole list of other projects. I'll just skip very qu quickly through them. So Bluebird and Artichoke were the two first ones, and they were very significant. They started 1950, before the Korean War. The Americans often claim that the, the reason for their mind control programs and behavior modification programs was because the Koreans had used it, so they needed to look into it. But they actually started before that. By 1954, they had fully-fledged Manchurian candidates. This means people who will kill, who will get hypnotized to do atrocious acts like shooting other people, carrying bombs, and have complete amnesia about it. They would, and th this is documented in their own documents. About 20,000 documents have been released in the Freedom of Information Act uh, requests. And that there, this is fully documented that those were operational in 1954. Project Chatter, I'll just skip through. QK Hilltop, MK Delta. Some of them have to do with different aspects of it. Some of them, the chemicals, the hypnosis, the foreign things, Europe, East, etc., etc. Chickwit, often. MK Naomi, Stargate. Sleeping Beauty is a project that was not confirmed. It's referenced in other documents, but all Freedom of Information Acts uh, are denied, and it has to do especially with remote influencing with the electronic signals. MK Ultra and MK Search were umbrella projects. That's why they are the most known ones. MK Ultra had 149 sub projects, and that was a all kinds of different experiments. The MK Ultra program, also some of the subprojects had to do with electronic implants. Subprojects 61, 129, 94, and 142. In the 1960s, Professor Jose Delgado took a normally hostile bull and implanted electrodes into its brain. Electrodes that could be activated by a radio transmitter. His objective was to see if stimulation of the bull's midbrain could short circuit the rage signals, stopping the bull before it reached the matador. After the bull had recovered from the implantation and in mid charge, the button was pressed. The bull's aggression ceased and the bull's aggression ceased instantly. A clearer experiment was performed with cats. In this classic example, the hypothalamus, the rhythm maker, was implanted with electrodes. Could it be responsible not just for rhythms, but also for rage? The switch is turned. Then the switch is turned off. So indeed, the hypothalamus does control certain types of aggression. As one of them told me who was involved in this, he said, we didn't want to do it on, on housewives in suburbia. We chose the people in society who could offer the least resistance and who would be least likely to expose it, or if they did expose it, it would be least likely to be believed. Thousands of government-sponsored experiments did take place at hospitals, universities, and military bases around our nation. Some were unethical, not only by today's standards, but by the standards of the time in which they were conducted. They failed both the test of our national values and the test of humanity. The United States of America offers a sincere apology to those of our citizens who were subjected to these experiments, to their families, and to their communities. Everything and everyone was a target. 
books and feature films were seized by the government. Every postmaster in the country was under orders to monitor all mail and refused to mail newspapers and magazines deemed unloyal. In 1971, a group called the Citizens Committee to Investigate the FBI created an incredible act of civil disobedience and broke into an FBI office. And they stole a bunch of documents because they were willing as patriots to pay their freedom to expose the fact that the FBI was out of control. And that turned into the Church and Pike Committees in the mid-1970s. And for the first time, we investigated our own intelligence service and found out the United States government was literally harassing and assassinating American citizens who were trying to behave politically in what was anathema to J.A. Mm-hmm. What we need to do is to look at the leader of that group. I believe his name was William Davida, a student of Rie Gellman and a professor of physics at Harvard. Those guys disciplined, organized, they found the word COINTELPRO, they created FOIA requests, they forced, I believe the New York Times wouldn't run their findings, and they forced the Washington Post to have to investigate us. Right now we need a redo of the Church and Pike committees so that we know what our intelligence groups are yep. up to. We need to inflict people who are actually progressive inside of center-left media, which is demonizing everybody. All of these people born in the 1940s are going away as a problem time. They don't have much time on this planet. And we are going to have to figure out how to unseat them legally. And with apologies to Malcolm X, we need to remove them by any legal means necessary. I apologize for the word legal, but it really does matter. What we need to do is to recognize that Magistan and Wokes are two cults founded on reality. There really is structural pollution. There really is a denial of reality by center-left media. We have entered non-reality. And we are a thermonuclear nation with responsibilities to the entire planet. You too have responsibilities to the planet. This is a thermonuclear situation. Yes, your, your history has been denied, just as my history is denied. Just as everybody who understands Howard Zinn's history has been denied. But on the other hand, in a 78-year man, uh, a white guy threw an elbow, sucker punching, a black protester being led out of an arena. Socialism has spread the shadow of human regimentation over most of the nations of the earth. And the shadow is encroaching upon our own liberty. If a person defends the activities of communist nations while consistently attacking the domestic and foreign policy of the United States, she may be a communist. Now that you become acquainted with the enlightened communist system, in contrast to the outdated capitalistic way of life, you are now prepared for the next step of your indoctrination. You won't have to worry about next year. The state will do your planning from now on. We'll overthrow it by force and violence. We'll have our way if it means bloodshed and terror. Because the news about communism is getting around. And it's only another word for slave. My question concerns corruption of the CIA and its officers and agents. I, I will be extremely uh, harsh, you know, with the philosophy, with the concept of the agency as such, you know, just on, on the design, you know, because by definition, by design, uh, is a left hand covered, secret, uh, no debate, no... Uh, they can do anything they want, they are accountable, we don't know to whom. You know, even the highest authority in the country said he didn't know. So, who is the boss? Who, we don't know. Nine dudes and chicks like you and me, who are assigned to be the last word, and we as Americans agree to abide by the Supreme Court's decisions, even when they're wrong. So, if you want if you tell me I don't get it and I haven't looked at Benford's law and all mm-hmm. of this stuff and you understand the, the Epstein conspiracy reached the court, okay, fine. Yes, structural oppression really does exist. You know, yes, it is absolutely true that um, it, there are so many irregularities to explain that Antifa is denied, not reported upon, that you're having uh, the idea that you're a, a bigots and and, and uh, chauvinists shoved down your throat. But you're not talking about the United States anymore. Mm-hmm. You're talking about 
a revolution to found a new country that doesn't exist. Yes, yes. There's no shortage of reality that you have been denied. And now you've attacked the Capitol building of the United States. And I can I can spin it either way. I can decide that it's a failed insurrection or I could say it's a mostly peaceful protest. And Marshall over at the realignment. The magic and genius of this country is the way in which the what I've called the oral and written tour of the United States, the Constitution and our culture interact. And so part of it is, is that even though this country came after my family in 1953, I stand when the national anthem is played. I'm sure I would not have wanted to hang out with friends. Diego Rivera. In Mexico City, but this is the second copy of Diego Rivera. This mural was first done at the Rockefeller Center in 1934. And Rockefeller didn't like it that he had certain figures in there and destroyed the entire mural. At the very time of the Cold War with communism, the United States taxpayer was totally financing the Soviet Union, which had been insolvent since 1917 and which had been maintained by the United States uh, taxpayer ever since. Or as the 20th century psychologist Nathaniel Brandon wrote, with such collectivist systems, the individual has always been a victim, twisted against him or herself and commanded to be unselfish, in sacrificial service to some allegedly higher value, called God, or Pharaoh, or Emperor, or King, or society, or the state, or the race, or the proletariat, or the cosmos. It is a strange paradox of our history that this doctrine, which tells us that we are to regard ourselves, in effect, as sacrificial animals, has been generally accepted as a doctrine representing benevolence and love for humankind. From the first individual, who was sacrificed on an altar for the good of the tribe, to the heretics and dissenters burned at the stake for the good of the populace or the glory of God, to the millions exterminated in slave labor camps for the good of the race or of the proletariat, it is this collectivist morality that has served as justification for every dictatorship and every atrocity, past or present. It was eating its way into the homes of the American workmen. Its sharp tongues of revolutionary heat were licking the altars of the churches, leaping to the belfry of the school bell, crawling into the sacred corners of American homes, seeking to replace marriage vows with libertine laws, burning up the foundations of society. While they have caused irritating strikes, and while they've infected our social ideas with the disease of their own minds and their unclean morals, we can get rid of them. I have learned that anything the senses experience can be synthetically reproduced by end game advanced technology. Mind control works in the same way. They psych profile people, map out everything about them, then use them as assets in any situation the agenda calls for. For their brain and mind mapping are done to targets who are going to be mind controlled. We choose science over fiction. We choose hope over fear. We choose unity over division. And we choose, we choose the idea that we can as Americans, when we act together, do anything. This is the United States of America. Those aren't my words. Those are his words. He's saying those things. They're not trying to hide it just politicians and the media. Bernie Sanders wants to give people, um, you know, 1200 a month to stay home. Okay. So what do you think about that? Um, well, I think that's ridiculous. We need to all be back to work. It's just a waste of money and taxpayer dollars. We don't have the money to be pr producing all those checks. So what do you think about Trump's plan to pay everyone $1,200 to stay home? To stay home? I think... I would rather him open up the the, uh, the country, but if that's what we need to do, I, I really like the idea that it's going to pay us. That, that's a good one. Yeah, I like it too. <laughs> yeah. Yes? By order of the prince of the world, all peoples shall report for the universal census. We have to let him know who we are. Now, isn't that odd? There is no secret agenda about the Great Reset. They're shouting it from the rafters. 
It's not me saying they want you to own nothing and be happy about it. It's them. is from Joshua Nowicki, and what you're seeing here is a mirage. We typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan shore. We talked about this last night. Conditions are right on the lake that we're actually seeing a mirage of the Chicago skyline. Um, Thank you. <laughs> they always say it's a mirage, but um, for a mirage to happen, you have to have very specific atmospheric um, conditions. And there have been so many people who have seen exactly the same thing on different days, different seasons, um, always the same. Um, you know, it's not a mirage, it's simply that you, you know, you're, you're looking across a plane. You know, we are in the Kafka world, you know, who is in the castle? We don't know, because the, the president said he didn't know. And the next guy says, the box stops here, but didn't say anything with that, because he, he just uh, avoided it. So for, for me, it's extremely serious that the democracy needs a CIA. And that's what they want. So, you know, you can kind of piece it together as to why they are so insistent in spending so many hundreds of millions of dollars of propaganda money to dumb down society. The NSA's Signals Intelligence is a program to remotely monitor magnetic fields created by electrical signals. And this applies to remote neural monitoring, aka thought surveillance. I am unsure what percentage of the population is under remote neural monitoring. And this is a, f a factor, as I say which every CIA trainee learns at the beginning. <coughs> well, the purpose of these covert action operations was to affect events in a given country. They were, as I demonstrated with the Italian election, they were from the very beginning going on and they continued on until today. There has never been a pause in these kinds of operations. And under the Reagan administration, of course, they've been very uh, strongly emphasized and given generous funding around the world. There's artistry to creating the world. It, what I imagine it to be. Um, unfortunately, I'm not an astronaut. <laughs> I've never been to space. But I've looked at these images over and over again, trying to sort of get the essence of it. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's, it's has to be. And um, many of us have been looking at these. By telling their secrets, their power is eroding.